The Galaxy Z Flip 5, I actually kind of like it. It did survive my durability test, and now I think it's time for a long form, multi-year durability test from inside my pocket. Only if, however, there are battery pull tabs inside, because battery recycling is a huge deal, and it's easier to recycle a phone when the batteries aren't permanently glued together. So that will be the deciding factor. I plan on using this phone for as long as I use my Galaxy Note 10, which was about four years, or up until it breaks, whichever comes first. Something else I've used for a really long time is today's sponsor, Stamps.com. I make a pretty cool laser cut metal dinosaur puzzle where 100% of the funds we generate go towards building inexpensive wheelchairs for people who need them. I never quite know how many I need to make or how many I'm gonna sell before publishing a video, which is probably a pretty normal thing for any small business. Luckily, stamps.com lets me order shipping supplies, labels, and printers while giving me an extraordinary up to 84% discount on USPS and UPS, while letting me know the quickest and cheapest shipping options. Stamps.com takes a lot of the guesswork out of fulfilling orders, and I can even schedule a pickup right from the stamps.com dashboard. It's like a personal office wherever I'm at. If you want to save time and money with your shipments, just go to stamps.com slash jerryrig for a four-week trial, free postage, and free five-pound digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts, just how we like it. You don't have to take my word for it, though. Stamps.com has been around for over 25 years and helped out over 1 million small businesses just like mine. Using my own computer and my own printer to handle a launch rush or the holiday rush. Stamps.com slash jerryrig, and huge thanks to stamps.com for supporting this channel. I'll leave a link for Alex the Accessible Allosaurus as well down in the video description. And now I think it's time we see if the Galaxy Z Flip 5 has what it takes to be my next smartphone. Let's get started. Taking apart and reassembling a smartphone is difficult. Taking apart and reassembling a folding smartphone successfully is basically impossible. With multiple screens, soft pixels, and the elegant intricacies of any sophisticated piece of electronics, the Z Flip 5 requires finesse and a delicate touch. Supposedly, this thing can survive more than 200,000 folds, but can it survive one teardown? Highly doubtful. Either way, we need to find the batteries inside and see if they have pull tabs. If they are easy to remove, it means Samsung has at least put a tiny bit of thought into the end-of-life experience for the devices they create. To remove the larger flexible screen, the bumpers need to come off first. The flip bumpers are far easier to remove than the fold bumpers. We can also see the built-in screen protector, the one we aren't supposed to take off. Someone suggested in the comments, most of which I do read by the way, that I try removing this guy to check the hardness levels underneath, and I think that's a good idea. It's a super sticky little unit, definitely not reappliable. And if we look at the layer underneath the screen protector, it's still plastic, and still scratches at a level of fingernail. It's also still a smidge melted from the burn test. The flexible screen can be removed from the phone now, Successfully removed still remains to be seen. Unfortunately, my razor slicing under the adhesive does kill a few rows of pixels, but with almost 3 million pixels, I'm sure no one will notice if a few stop participating. The flexible ribbon for the flexible screen is at the very bottom, and still plugged into the motherboard. But since the screen is still alive and not completely dead yet, I think we actually have a chance at successfully rebuilding this thing. So I won't rip that ribbon apart. The direction a normal person would initiate disassembly is through the back of the phone, going through the bare glass panel as well as through the flex window display screen. I use heat and a suction cup to lift up the glass from the frame. The glass is nestled down into the frame walls, so it's fairly difficult to extract. I found that there seems to be less adhesive around the left and right sides of the glass, and my jerry rig razor knife can work its slicing magic from there. You too can own your own jerry rig knife at jerryrigknife.com. This is actually a lot harder than it looks. With the rear glass gone, we can move up to the flex window. Again, there seems to be less adhesive on the sides, and I'm taking very special care not to accidentally poke the AMOLED panel underneath the glass, since it's about as fragile as a potato chip. 
Before going any farther though, I want to see if the phone is still alive after having completed the two most difficult parts. As it boots, we can see both screens on the same side, and it looks like even with all the chaos so far, we might still be on track for success. But I won't get my hopes up. I'll get everything powered down for the final time as we continue excavations for the battery. The front screen ribbon gets unclipped just like a little Lego, and things are starting to look real good. There are two screws near the center hinge where the 15 watt wireless charger plugs into. This guy can also reverse wireless charge at 5 watts. I'll unplug the battery and remove five additional screws that hold on the bottom plastics. The bottom plastics only include the lower loudspeaker this time around. It still does have foam balls inside, but doesn't have the cool transparent blue window like we saw on the fold speaker. With the plastics gone, we can pop off the two extension ribbons from the lower board, which has the gold microphone box as well as a 25 watt USB-C port with a red rubber ring around the edge. And finally, under that extension ribbon, we see that indeed, the Flip 5 does have blue battery pull tabs. Along with a circular vibrator motor and some waterproofing mesh over the speaker opening, which helps maintain the Flip 5's IPX8 water resistance. We'll check the pullability of the tabs after we get the motherboard free. The motherboard is tucked under a large metal plate with eight more Phillips head screws. With the plate taken off, the top black plastics and the LED flash come out next. I'll unplug the battery just like a little Lego, and it's interesting to see that all the different global markets have their own checkable box near the upper extension ribbon. Samsung probably makes one ribbon that fits all of the different manufactured variants, and the manual check mark indicates where it's supposed to be sold. The fingerprint scanner and whatever this other cable is gets unplugged next, along with the two Lego style connectors for the extension ribbon that passes through the frame. We can remove the SIM card tray, not making that mistake twice, and the motherboard is free from the confines of the flip frame. This particular variant is using a gray graphite pad for thermal dissipation. Samsung does change up the construction between the market variants. Sometimes the cooling is made from copper, and sometimes it's graphite. The 12 megapixel ultra wide camera does not have optical image stabilization, but the main 12 megapixel camera does have OIS. There's also no thermal paste again on the back, most smartphones do have some kind of paste, just like a computer, to move heat away from the circuits. The selfie camera is 10 megapixels, and I would totally show you that it does not have OIS except for it's glued in and I ripped off the sensor. My bad. I'll give you an up close look at the earpiece instead to make up for it. Finally, we have the batteries with their gloriously glorious pull tabs. Either Samsung has finally used up the world supply of glue, or they care about the end of life experience. Circuit boards and batteries have different recycling streams, so it's incredibly nice that they're not permanently glued in place anymore. Thank you, Samsung. Thumbs up for that. Feel free to close your eyes and enjoy the sound for this next battery, not only because it sounds nice, but because I was so excited to pull it out, I forgot to focus the camera. And if your eyes are closed, you won't notice. Thanks. The first battery was 1000 milliamp hours, and the second battery, the larger of the two, is 2700, for a total of 3700. You can open your eyes again, by the way, or leave them closed, I'm not your mom. We already pre-removed most of the flexible screen while the phone was still alive, so it's easier to take off now. Just untack the Lego style plug from down near the charging port, and the flexible screen is free. Interestingly enough, where the fold ditched the metal plates, the flip still has silver slabs installed. These support the screen and are probably what helped me get it off in one piece. The hinge does appear to have changed. The flip 4 didn't have any gears inside, but this flip 5 does. Interesting that Samsung would switch back to gears. Now, the chance of this flip 5 going back together in one piece is in the negative percentile. The precise geometry and fragile inner workings have been thoroughly dismantled and manhandled by grubby human digits. Not to mention the front camera sensor has been ripped to shreds. The caliber of technician required to successfully take apart and restore one of these Lamborghini equivalent cellular devices would be so high. A person so strong, so precise, so trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent, and not to mention super good looking. Huh, would you look at that. It's working. Nothing short of amazing. Now, I do plan on switching my daily phone from my 4-year-old Note 10 Plus to one of these Flip 5s. It'll be an actual multi-year durability test in my pocket, 
I'll be buying a new one, of course, to give it the best chance at surviving. Maybe it'll last four years like my Note 10, or maybe it'll only last for one. Place your bets down in the comments. My smartphone is a tool, and I'll be treating my Flip 5 just like any other phone, with no mercy. Our front camera is surprisingly functional, but a tad blurry. Probably from getting its sensor ripped off. As always though, my phone will 100% have a teardown skin installed. I make these teardown skins that show off the internals of more than 100 different phones and tablets. So if you want to be cool, there's a very good chance I have one for your own phone. Feel free to check with the link down in the description. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you around.